All right, what up? Uh, first reaction here, Hunter, Dragonflight, Talent Trees. I am very excited. Hunter wasn't last this time. Let's go. Uh, yeah, 9.2 was a little rough, a little bit, but it's okay. We're going to give the first reaction here. I have not read anything. As you can see, posted 21 seconds ago. All right. So, uh, yep. Oh, and Rogue in here. Cool. Uh, still a lot of work to be done. Yep. Mix match talents. Previously spec specific abilities. Serpent Sting and Explosive Shot. Okay. Wailing Arrow. A more permanent appearance in the spec trees. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised by that because I feel like Wailing Arrow was kind of just a weird tacked on, like, non-synergistic with anything else in the spec for Marksman. And that was fine when it's like a one tier or now maybe two season uh, effect. But, so I'm curious to see if they'll change it and integrate it somehow, like maybe it gets buffed by trick shots damage, or the precise shots uh, buff, or something. I don't know, some way that it integrates into the marksman spec. Um, I have progged all of CE now on every boss except Raglon in Shadowlands. I did that mostly on marksman. I played BM on... I think two fights, Halandris and Jailer. Is that it? I don't remember playing BM in Sanctum. And I definitely didn't in Nathria. Yeah, I think that's correct. Um, I have played Survival a little bit. I played it when the spec originally got reworked back in Legion a bit more. Um, but overall, it's my least favorite spec. I didn't roll a Hunter class to be melee. Uh, if I did play melee I would probably want it to be dual wield I don't know why I just like that more than a spear and it feels more huntery to me because of Rexar and stuff um but regardless anyway so survival is the spec I'll probably have the least to talk about but that's okay uh I'll continue on here you're happy with how hunters are as a whole are currently playing see I really disagree with this because my two main problems are one right now I feel like marksman is fundamentally broken and that might it's it's a largely due to the tier set, but not entirely due to the tier set. Meaning, the spec was still somewhat fundamentally broken in 9.0 and 9.1. And I hope that they make changes to fix that, because basically, if you give us my, my philosophy, sort of, as a as a, whatever, armchair game designer as far as spec design is concerned and stuff, is that if you're giving me a limited resource buff, something like precise shots, something like uh, the trick shots buff, limited aimed shot charges, then you have regular cooldown abilities like ra uh, rapid fire and things like that. And you also have the resource itself of focus, obviously, which then you can generate with, with steady shot. But especially with precise shots, there shouldn't be a situation where you are ignoring spending the limited resource buff and overcapping and not able to use the procs. It's a little bit similar to like proc munching that stuff like frost mages have with ice lance uh, charges and things like that with fingers of frost and brain freeze procs. It's a little bit similar to that where I feel like the specs work and function better when you are able to maximally, if you're playing properly perfectly or like nearly perfectly, that you're able to spend all of the resources you generate and generate enough resources to spend the random procs and things like that. I don't like when you're overcapping resources. It feels like the spec doesn't work properly when it's giving you too much of one resource and you don't have enough of a different resource to spend it when you're supposed to be able to spend all of the other resource, kind of. And that's it's supposed to be the payoff of the spec. And it, it feels like it artificially limits the ceiling of the spec when it's not functioning properly like that. Um, and it's probably not uh, being accounted for in their, I imagine, internal... DPS sim type things properly as a result. And for example, Markson has been one of the lowest single target specs all of Shadowlands. Um, they have a really hard time buffing it because it's still one of the only AoE capped specs. Uh, it's one of the few specs in the game which has a threat funnel redirect and it's target capped. That is a straight up contradictory design. It makes no sense. A spec that's redirecting threat needs to be able to redirect threat on all the mobs, not just five mobs at a time. Um, yeah, so I really disagree with this at the outset. I imagine I will most disagree with Marksman. That's the spec that I like the most. It's the spec that I play the most. 
Um, so when they're saying they're currently happy with how, as a whole they're currently playing, I disagree with that in kind of a fair number of ways. Um, my other main issue is with BM is that it's an extremely easy basic spec to play, and I'm okay with that existing in the game. I think that's good. I like the full mobility of a range spec. I think a lot of players need that uh, as sort of a, a learning tool, almost like training wheels going into raiding and stuff like that. I think it has a purpose. It has a place in the game. That's completely fine by me. What I don't like is that when I'm comfortable with the spec and I want to be able to make it more complex and push me harder in a similar way as Marksman does, uh, when you're trying to play that perfectly, it doesn't offer that to me. There's no way that I can make the spec more difficult or more restrictive and have a higher skill ceiling. You hit the skills, the skill ceiling on BM as a player extremely early compared to every other spec in the game, except for maybe Havoc the H. Um, Havoc is an alt that I've played. That's the only reason that I can compare that fairly directly. Um, and I would rather BM have additional ceiling built in the floor is fine i think the floor is fine where it is but an additional ceiling that you can opt in it doesn't have to be for like five percent damage it can be for like one to two percent damage i'm perfectly okay with optimizing around one or two percent damage for making this back a lot more complex or having limited uh movement restrictions and things like that that is completely fine by me i hope that they allow me to do that so uh those are the three trees Let's start with this. Baseline abilities. Arcane shot. Yep. Cheetah turtle. Yep. Calling a pet. Okay. Uh, I wonder... I don't see a lone wolf in here for marksmen, so that's interesting. Disengage, of course. Eagle eye. Not really useful. Exil. Okay. Something that I would like to see in Shadowlands is that the defensive abilities should be off GCD. Just straight up. The, you have a design in the game which is DPS checks on DPS bosses. You have enrage timers. You have, uh, you know, the abomination on Anduin. You have the the adds on uh, on Anduin as well to bring up people from downstairs phases. Um, things like that. You have DPS checks on certain mobs and certain timings and things like that. If at any at any point in a fight those overlap with a dangerous mechanic where you would want to use your defensive, you are either Playing your DPS properly, which you are under pressure and urgency to do, which is always be casting. You are GCD locked. Meaning, if you press an ability and then the, you know, a mistake happens, something happens, and you need your defensive, you might be locked out of being able to use that defensive for 1.4 seconds. Imagine if you were playing a game and you had to play with 1,400 milliseconds of delay. That would be unplayably bad. That game would be atrociously bad. You would say that the netcode on that game was atrociously bad. You would call up your ISP internet service provider and tell them that your internet needs upgrading and they should send a tech out immediately to, to handle it and get fiber in the ground instead of this, like, rusted copper cable or something, right? 1400 MS is atrociously unacceptable. Even in 2004, 1400 MS was atrociously unacceptable, and it's 2022, right? So if you're playing your DPS spec properly and all the fights properly and they're giving you mechanics which force you to always be casting ABCs, lock your GCD, everything used on GCD, then I can't use the defensive. Or, and to me, having defensives with limited usability is cool. It's fine. It's an interesting decision-making thing to do as a player. But it shouldn't be a GCD decision-making. It's having health stones. I can only use those once in a fight. So if I use it early on in a fight to save me from a mechanic that's medium level dangerous, then I don't have it later in the fight for a high dangerous mechanic fight. But I also have a health potion, which I can use maybe early in the fight, and if the fight goes longer than five minutes, I can get a second use. So it's more optimal for me to use a health potion earlier in the fight. There's interesting decision making around the cooldown of when you're using a defensive ability already built into things, and in the limited use cases that you have of using that ability just in the cooldown to fight timer length duration interplay between those two factors. It doesn't need to be on the GCD. Made worse by this is that hunters have had the worst defensives of almost every spec in the game pretty much for all of Shadowlands and never got a single buff. 
and that is unacceptable to me. Um, our main defensive conduit, our best defensive in the whole expansion, was a conduit called Marksman's Advantage. It meant you hunters marked the boss, and then it did like up to, I think, at the highest conduit levels of 278 with empowered stuff, um, up to like 10 or 11% less damage taken from the boss that you marked. Cool. Except that didn't work for like half the boss abilities in the raids. So you would mark the boss and it did nothing to the actual threatening abilities that would threaten your life. It just didn't work. The conduit straight up lied to you. It said reduces damage, doesn't work at all. You could put that on soul render, guess what? It didn't affect, like literally every soul render ability did not get reduced by that conduit. It did nothing on soul render. You were had an empty conduit slot on soul render. The game straight up lied to you, it told you this conduit did something, and it did not do something. There's like a ton of dungeon bosses in M+, you can mark the boss, it doesn't save you from the threatening mechanic on the boss because it doesn't work. Give hunters defensive buffs, not just because hunters need it, but because all defensives should not be on the GCD, okay? Take Exil off the GCD, uncap MM. Those are my two like lines in the sand needs to change, especially. Okay, Eyes of the Beast, cool. Fain Death, cool. Also a good conduit here. Uh, I liked having use cases for Fain Death on stuff, although it bugged out a lot of boss abilities and made their visuals not display properly. But if you can fix those bugs, uh, having Fain Death tied to a damage reduction is a cool defensive. I would like to see that stay. Uh, Flare, always good, nice. Freeze Trap, cool. Hunter Tracking, sure. Hunter's Mark, uh, cool. Currently does nothing. You should tie in the Hunter's Mark debuff or something to this. Also, this probably shouldn't be on GCD also, but whatever. Pet Utility, Steady Shot. Okay, it's weird that this isn't like Cobra Shot or something for BM, but whatever. And Wing Clip. I assume this is Concussive Shot if you're ranged. Let's see. Um, okay, so in the first row we have Kill Command, Concussive Shot, or Kill Shot, right? That's this. Uh, so it's giving us Concussive Shot. It doesn't say which one you start as, right? I assume it's like Kill Command to BM, Concussive Shot to MM, Kill Shot for Survival. Oh, no, this Survival gets and BM get Kill Command. MM gets Kill Shot. So you always have to spend a point if you want Concussive Shot. So what's below Concussive Shot? Nothing. Okay, so you're never picking that. That's already in a weird spot because you're never going to pick Concussive Shot. I feel like. Although Tar Trap is further down. Um, so potentially if you wanted a slow, but Tar Trap is AoE, and I believe still lasts longer than the slow from Concussive Shot. And unless you are planning to Steady Shot, which I'm not sure that BM or Survival will be planning to, I don't think MM... MM is the only one I could see potentially taking this talent ever. So that already seems weird to me, that if this talent is only ever pickable for MM, why is it in the shared talent tree? I don't know, seems weird, but okay. Trailblazer, um, also a weird talent. Kind of just a general open world thing, not really a actually useful talent in most boss fights. Uh, the only one that kinda had some use was like Sylvanas, that was kind of it. Post haste, incredibly strong, and then improved kill shot. So MM definitely goes straight down to get to this exil thing. Why is post haste two ranks? The movement speed is only partially. So it's they're giving you the option of only putting one point in here for the uh, snare removal effect, and then the movement speed is for a second rank. I imagine this might just be a one-point wonder, but I like having the option, maybe. I'm okay with that. Cool. Uh, increase pets' health. Uh, if they're designing... Here's the thing. If pets are going to be out on any fights, they need to plan pet damage around you not having this talent. Because if your pets ever die on a fight and you're like BM, and your pets need this talent to live, that's just awful. Because it just means these... You just lose two talent points for playing BM, if that's the case. Or the other situation is you don't need these two talent points, and then BM never needs to take these talents. But then they're just two dead talent points that BM needs to spend to get further on in the tree. 
this is awful design. This should not exist. This, this to me, says they didn't have enough ideas for what to put in a shared hunter tree, and this was the, the, the placeholder they came up with. This should be a placeholder, and this should be changed to something else. Because there's no possible way that you can design fights and design this talent in a way that feels good for any spec to ever take this. Especially if MM is not ever playing with a pet, you shouldn't have talents that only work with a pet in the shared spec tree. Because then that's just a dead talent point. You've, you've essentially just made it a, a non-choice MM tree if you put talents in, like this in there. Counter shot. Cool. Uh, replaced with muzzle for survival, of course. Uh, I believe that's this point in the middle here. So if you take post haste as MM, you can get it fairly easily. Cool. Natural mending. Every focus you spend reduces the remaining cooldown. Well, here's the thing. Because Exhilaration is on GCD, you don't use it on cooldown as much, which also hurts MM's defensives because it's on the GCD, which means oftentimes you can't press it because if you need to save yourself, you would sooner press Health Pot or Health Stone or Turtle because all three of those are off GCD because you might not get around the GCD in time. It might be up to 1.4 seconds or whatever until you can exil to save yourself. And if you don't know if you'll live those 1.4 seconds, you can't risk waiting for the exil. You just use a different defensive instead. Which means you use your health potion or something, and then you're topped, and then you're not in danger anymore, and then you don't need to exil. So exil sits usable, off CD, ready to be used, but not ever pressed. Right? That is a fundamental problem of the design. You give me a button that I can't physically press for the exact designed purpose it's meant to serve i still can't press it in that situation right that's how you know it being on the gcd is bad because that's how it plays out all right tar trap uh trap will exist for one minute i thought there was a duration on this oh 30 seconds yeah so this is a 50 percent slow for 30 seconds uh whereas concussive shot is a 50 percent slow for six seconds so it's pretty unlikely that Concussive Shot is ever a more effective slow than Tar Trap, basically. Especially if you combine it with Binding Shot and stuff. Uh, okay, anyway. And this is 1 GCD, where if you wanted to slow a target for up to 30 seconds, um, using Knockbacks or Binding Shot or something like that, you would have to spend, what, 5 GCDs on Concussive Shots versus 1 on a Tar Trap? Uh, misdirection. That's a weird spot for misdirection, but it's below counter shot, sure. This should be baseline. I feel like. Because you, you, you should give a reason that you're bringing hunters to a raid, right? Like, DKs have, like, AMZ. And priests have like power word, uh, whatever, fortitude, and stuff like that. And druids are now getting mark of the wild. And you already have arcane intellect and things like that. It's not lust because shamans and mages exist. It's not a unique class utility or anything else. But none of these are really unique class utility. Flare is kind of an option for universal utility for why you'd bring a hunter. Or feign death, if there's certain mechanics that you can target onto a hunter that a feign death can can fizzle or something. But those are the only two that kind of exist. Or hunter's mark, which is most of the time similar in effectiveness to what a flare would do. But those are kind of the only really effective hunter utilities. And realistically, flare's been useful on... And it, has there been any bosses in Shadowlands where flare was useful? Not off the top of my head that I can remember. Anyway, I think misdirection is the utility that a hunter can bring. This should be baseline. Trank shot, sure, cool. Uh, more pet talents. I mean, it's on the BM side of the tree, but still. Improved men pet. Uh, mend pet is a GCD. You're never wanting to mend your pet. 
the pets currently have leech or are spirit beasts and heal themselves and stuff like that. Or you just have the avoidance thing, which I can read down here. Uh, they just should already naturally take less damage that you don't need to heal them in the first place. And I certainly don't want to spend three points on this. Yikes. That is awful. That is terrible. Exil heals your pet, but we're already able to get the mend thing. That's also on the BM side of the tree. So you're either forced to take three points plus scare beast, forced to spend four points going this way, or get tar trap and go two this way. So to me, both of these talents do the same thing. So why are there two of them? They both heal my pet. That's what they do. They cost me GCDs to heal my pet. Okay. They're both literally doing the same thing. But this one is three points and effectively four points, and this one's two points. So why would I ever spend three points when I could spend two points? Are you really going to make my pet need that much healing that I need to spend not only these two points, but maybe a third point? Or maybe all three points in here, and then maybe a fourth point? Are, are you really going to make me spend four talent points just so my pet doesn't die? And you think that's fun for me? You think this makes me happy? You think I'm excited to spend those four talent points? I thought they were supposed to be tough decisions that I, I would felt like there were good options that I wanted to take both. I don't want to take either of these. These are horribly designed talents. No BM Hunter wants to press Mend Pet. No BM Hunter wants to press Exhilaration to heal their pet. No Survival Hunter wants to do those things. Alright, whatever. Moving on. Pet takes reduced damage under the effect of Misdirection. Uh, in Raid, you're using this on your tank, so it's useless. Uh, it doesn't need to be two talent points. That's You're just eating talent points again for no reason. They Can you tell that they ran out of ideas for Hunter talents, by the way? Uh, this was already very evident in Torghast from the start of Shadowlands because MM had this effect. Your pet takes reduced damage while under the effect of Misdirection. MM had this effect as a Torghast power enabled for MM to get. This was an option. It showed up all the time. Uh, this, I think, was also a Torghast talent that that MM could get, and this was also a Torghast power that MM could get. Oh no, this is baseline. I think. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, they ran out of ideas already in Torghast of Shadowlands. They didn't have ideas for what powers hunters could use, and they gave pet talent stuff to MM which was useless. It was real fun, not really, to do Torghast. Um, and they still don't have any better ideas in Dragonflight. This is not making me excited so far. When Trank Shots dispels an, uh, dispels an effect, gain focus. I don't want to spend two points for this. This should be a one-point talent. Or what's this fifth option? It doesn't say. Choice node. Scatter shot or binding shot. Removes all harmful damage over time effects. Okay. So basically you're either wasting two talent points or one just to get down here. So it depends on what this other choice talent is or what these three talent points are here most likely. So far, even as BM, I think you'll want to go down this way, get counter shot, probably get misdirect, prob possibly get a uh, trank shot thing, maybe get focus for it, uh, maybe reduce your pet's damage taken, which is useless in raid. Literally two dead talent points in raid, alongside two dead talent points in raid, alongside three dead talent points in raid. Like, eh, what is this tree, dude? Awful. Uh, so you'll probably go down to get Binding Shot and then come back around over or something. Or they're just making you waste all three points in a completely dead thing just to get down to the BM side easier. Like, that's awful, man. Yuck. This talent tree seems awful. Uh, Scare Beast. Literally, when has this been useful in Raid? The, I can tell you the amount of times I've cast Scare Beast in Raid in all of Shadowlands so far. Okay, ready? Here's the list. Huntsman Altimore. 
That's the list. Okay? Or, when you got MC'd on Kel'Thuzad, you would scare beast a random druid or feral spirits from your shamans in your raid. Or if you had other hunters with pets out and you were, weren't were playing MM on that fight. Or, same thing on Jailer, when you got MC'd, you would randomly scare beast. Those were the times I cast scare beast in all of Shadowlands. So, this got used on one fight in the whole expansion. And it was the second boss of the raid. And it wasn't even needed because other classes had CC. So this is a dead talent point. Make Scare Beast do something else. Or make it, or make the raids literally have a beast on like half the fights or something. So that this utility is useful. You can't give hunters like 10 dead talent points in their the first half of their tree. I'm on row 6. I'm not even at the good stuff yet. And then there's already like half of the talents are completely dead, wasted, useless in raid entirely. This is awful. I am not so far very pleased. All right, Intimidation. This is useless for MM, but it's on the far left side of the tree. <sighs> and M well, it's in the middle of the tree. So MM won't take it for Intimidation. Uh, high Explosive Trap. Causes fire damage, knocking all enemies away. Cool, I like this effect. I'm okay with that being in the middle instead of Intimidation for MM. I like that. That has some utility, cool. See, this I can see having utility in raid. This has utility once in the past two years. Literally one fight, and it was the second boss. Camouflage. Uh, not usable in combat, from my knowledge. Horrible healing, not really a defensive. This is also a dead talent point completely for raid. Okay. So what I'm, what I'm looking at this so far is that these are not utilities that I'm excited or able to use in raid. Here's the biggest problem with this so far. The utilities are fine. For open world stuff, if there's a Torghast type thing, if there's, you know, a boss rush mode, if there's M+, like PvP, all that stuff is great, that's fine. I will use these in those environments, but what, what challenges me in the game is raiding. What I play the game for and optimize my character for and get the gear for my character for and things like that is raiding. That's what I like doing in the game. That's where I have the most fun. And so you're essentially telling me spend all these talent points to get down to the couple things you care about at the bottom, but the top stuff doesn't matter for raid. And so just pick the stuff that you're never going to press and never going to use, which is like, that's fine, I guess, but that's a really uninspired talent tree, I feel like. When other classes get stuff like, I can kick now as a Resto Druid, or I can innervate now as a Feral Druid, or all those type of things, where your class fundamentally changes what they can do before. Currently, my class can do everything that it could do before, except now I get a knockback on, my, on a trap. That's it. That's the only new thing that I've gotten so far that I can see. And all the rest of the stuff isn't inspiring uh this every or this um where is it improved trank shot this should also improve counter shot by the way and give focus on successful counter shots okay continuing on born to be wild reduces the cooldowns of eagle cheetah and turtle by 7 14 and 21 percent that has some utility in raid primarily for cheetah and turtle um and for survival, it's kind of required, right? Because of Eagle. I feel like it's a little steep that it's three talent points. But here's the, here's the problem, right? They put the good stuff at the bottom. Like, you can see, here's where they had the ideas for what they wanted, the stuff. And above the 20 required line, here's all the stuff where they were like, we have no ideas, right? Like, all this is utility. Half of it should be baseline, probably. Mostly misdirect should be baseline. Like, they literally had no idea for what to give BM. They had to make a required talent point for survival to come over here. They had to put PvP talents like camouflage in here. It's just really kind of weird. So, and they just needed 20 points above that point. And so they just had to make these, like, three talent points here, three talent points here, two talent points here, two talent points here, two talent points here, 
for all this stuff that really should be one point wonders. The 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 so far the only talent that's been two points that I think was worth being two points was post haste. That had a good dichotomy to it where the first point gets you something and the second point gets you something and you might only want to spend one point or you might only want to spend two points the other ones are basically like either you're forced to spend all three points just because of the pathing location or you really can't ever spend one point if you're going to spend one point you're going to spend two points also because of the pathing and things like that so i'm so far not a fan of how many talent points are costing in this they need more ideas for stuff. Um, I should make a second video this after, and I'll brainstorm, of what ideas could be talents so that they have more points to spend on actually interesting stuff. And you're not spending like three talent points just to get the cooldown from 7 to 14 to 21. Because that's... This could be one or two points, and it would be fine. Three is where it kind of gets excessive, I feel like, and it's just padding, and it's just costing talent points because you need to get the count down so that the bottom of the tree you can't get everything right okay the cooldown of tar trap and freeze trap is reduced by 2.5 and 5 seconds now freeze trap uh it doesn't say the cooldown here the cooldown is 30 seconds on traps uh and where is tar trap here it also doesn't say the cooldown here The, the cooldowns are all ready to the point where you have 100% uptime on traps. This talent does effectively nothing. Because the trap effects already have 100% uptime. This just means you will overlap the CC more. This is also wasting two talent points for no reason. This is boring. This is a horrible talent. No one is excited to take this. Now, if this was like up to 15 seconds or something it would be obviously broken in pvp probably but like five seconds you need to get up to like 10 to 15 second range for this talent to be interesting but trap cooldowns are fundamentally not an interesting effect now they are because you introduced an actual fun uh trap now in the high explosive trap right that's cool getting some trap cooldown on that but two and a half and five seconds like five seconds should be one point and go five to ten at minimum. At minimum. But also this could just be five seconds. One rank talent. Don't make it don't make me waste two points on this garbage. Okay. Binding shackles. Targets knocked by explosive trap or stunned by intimidation. Deal 20% less damage to you. Another PvP only talent, open world only talent. For eight seconds after the root or stun effect ends. How about 10% less damage? Remove these words from the talent. And then it's a useful talent in raid. And you give hunters a defensive that they can help their tanks with. Maybe hunter utility is we help tanks. Right? We're not healers, but we help tanks. We give them threat, we give them some damage reduction. We give the, uh, we have a little external. When we can uh, explosive trap, knock something, or binding shot it or whatever. Uh, this should also probably maybe work on binding shot. I don't know, whatever. Agile movement. Movement speed increased by 246%. You know what? That's here on the tree. I'm okay with that being a 3-point talent. Make it like 3... 6, 10. Give me 10% movement speed. At least 8. At least 8 or something. 6% is like kind of not noticeable, I feel like. It needs to be like 8 or 10. 8 or 10% at least. Could be a 2-point talent. Of all the three-point talents, this is the least offensive to me so far. But 2% per rank, man, that's... Hunter players are out here literally, like, scrounging for scraps of a useful talent, right? We're excited now. This is one of the most exciting talents. On row 7... ...is to gain 2% movement speed per talent point. Wow. Wow. Now, if this was 2% leech, 2% avoidance, now we're talking. Now we're talking, right? I, I like movement speed. Movement speed's a fun stat too. Don't get me wrong. But hunter defensives are garbage. You're giving me stuff like mend pet heals my pet. Exhilaration heals my pet. My pet takes reduced damage under the effect of misdirection. How about I take reduced damage under the effect of misdirection, huh? 
My pet doesn't need it. I'm the dude who needs it. Give me some help out here. One heal. All right, moving. Pet damage increased. Three rank talent. You know, if you're gonna just make me spend three talent points just because you need me to spend three talent points, at least make it transparent and straight up, and at least make me feel good for doing it. Because this I can respect. 369... I'm okay with that. BM Survival Hunters, take that. Thumbs up. No complaints about this one. I'll complain about their other stuff. This one gets... You're okay. Critical Strike Chance increased by 246%. I'm also cool with that. Where are these exactly? In the tree. I think the pet damage is here, the crit chance is here. Because the next one should be barrage looking. Yeah. Barrage, uh, usable while moving. All right, cool. Does reduce damage beyond eight targets. At least it's not five, you know? At least it's not five. Now the question is, will this be balanced to be usable and worth the damage? Because all of Shadowlands, it was never worth picking or casting Barrage as a talent. So is this a dead talent point? Or are you going to balance the ability so that it's worth using? That is an important question. Serpent Sting. Uh, take small damage, small nature damage, damage over time. All the way in here, really. Kind of a weird late place for Serpent Sting. They want you to be able to have a build without Serpent Sting. I thought Explosive Shot was a baseline ability. Oh, they're being moved into the core tree. I see. I misread this sentence earlier. Alright, my bad. Yeah, that's a weirdly late place for a Serpent Sting to be. Hmm. Okay. Well, in a world where we don't have the Serpent Sting attached to Aim Shot Legendary, I hope this is also worth casting. Improved Kill Command, 2 rank talent, damage increase. Thumbs up, cool. Stampede, uh, I assume this works like the current BM Stampede. Okay, that's here? Sure, cool. Whenever you successfully freezing trap an enemy, gain focus. All right, I'm cool with that. And increase all focus gained for five seconds to re-rank talent. Cool. I'm okay with that. Um, my question is, is this successfully freezing trap an enemy? So it's only on enemies that can be trapped. I feel like this would be a cool thing to optimize as a rotational ability. This is what I'm asking for, right? Like, if I say... I want BM to have rotational complexity that allows me to get 1% more damage. Let me freezing trap a boss that's immune to freezing trap, right? I literally cast trap, same as they were doing at the start of Shadowlands with the legendary with the flare on the tar trap thing. It's literally same concept as that, but with freezing trap. And then let me just play around optimizing this focus gain and the focus gain buff. And get 1% extra DPS from doing that as BM. But at least it's like more mentally engaging for me to do that and optimize to get that 1% more damage, right? And for the people that just want BM to be an easier spec to play, they don't have to worry about this. And they just save three talent points to get more utility up higher and their pet dies less often because they can heal it more or whatever, right? Like, sure. But, so I, I think this should be when you successfully trigger a freezing trap or something like that. It also is weird because right now BM is the least, I would say, least in control of when they gain focus. Maybe that's not true. I mean, it kind of is. And so if you're optimizing around gaining 45 focus, like that's kind of a large chunk of focus, and it's going to be really easy to overcap especially when you increase your focus gain by 100% for 5 seconds. Like, I believe right now, the increased focus gain from Aspect of the Wild is 10% or 20% or something. 
Now, granted, that lasts longer, but still, it's like a weirdly... It's going to be very easy to overcap focus on this, so you're going to have to completely drain your focus before that, and still have cooldowns. So you can't drain your focus by using cooldowns either. You have to drain your focus while still having cooldowns to then immediately spend the focus that you're gaining from this at the same time. So you, you like, drain, gain, drain again, like, back to back. So it's, you can't just, like, use some high cost abilities that have a cooldown, because then you won't be able to drain on the second rotation, uh, and you'll overcap on the back end. Anyway, overall I like the design of this. This is cool. Come here, shot. Uh, it's the two-target thing for MM that desperately needs two-target cleave because they're going to make trick shots still, uh, floor capped at three and ceiling capped at five. That's awful, and MM should be able to do two-target cleave. If anything, that this raid and this tier set has proven that to be true. Um, notably, this doesn't replace arcane shot. So is this getting buffed by precise shots still? Who knows? Uh... Two rank talent, it's essentially crit bleed scaling. Cool. Already exists. It's a passive thing. Cool. Sure. No problem with that. Choice node. Serpent Sting's damage applies latent poison, latent poison to the target, stacking up to 10 times. Barb Shot, Aim Shot, Raptor Strike consumes all stacks, dealing nature damage to the target per stack consumed. So. Basically, this means you want to use one of these three abilities before this hits 10 stacks, so that you don't overcap and lose damage. That's the thing I'm noticing, is that this doesn't do damage, like if, if it's not like um, Icicle on Frost Mage, where if you are at 5 and you generate one, that it'll automatically fire and you still get the damage, so you can't lose damage from overprocking it. Um, this, you could lose damage. So you, it's, it's creating a, a floor timer, where you have to... The, the accumulation of 10 stacks sets a timer in the background of how often you have to use one of these core abilities. Um, so it depends on how quickly this stacks up to 10, but it's just from Serpent Sting. So it depends on the tick rate of Serpent Sting. Interesting. If this has rotational complexity to it, I like it. If it's effectively just a passive, it's still okay. Because I don't think there's a world where you would ever really go more than, like, let's say, 10 to 20 seconds without using one of these abilities. In which case, it's effectively just a passive. If it's a passive, it's fine. But I would like if there was maybe rotational complexity to it. Alright, cool. Barb Shot, Aim Shot, Raptor Strike has a chance to make your next Serpent Sting cost no focus and deal additional 250% initial, uh, in, initial damage. Um, my hope for this talent would be it makes it worth it that you would overwrite your Serpent Sting early, possibly, rather than waiting for the full duration. Because if you're just waiting for the full duration and then refreshing Serpent Sting as normal, this is also effectively a passive. But you wouldn't want to do that because if you waited, you could have a chance to proc this twice. And then you would only get one cast with the additional damage. You would munch a proc. You would, and it would make... You're effectively then casting a later Serpent Sting unbuffed when you would have had a longer duration Serpent Sting going with the buffed initial damage. Alright, cool. I like those talents. Could maybe be better depending on the design, but these aren't bad. I'm cool with those. Cool. Alright. Uh, bottom choice row. There's a choice, and another one sort of on the BM side, one in the middle, and then explosive shot thing. Cool. Kill command, execute. Nice. Uh, this is a replacement slash substitute for kill shot for BM and possibly survival, most likely just BM. My question is... Because kill shot is so high up, is that is there enough extraneous talent points in the upper side that BM can path? Because like BM doesn't have required talents, right? Like BM shouldn't need the pet healing and the pet exhilaration healing and the pet misdirection damage taken and stuff. Like BM shouldn't need that stuff, so it can go 
down the marksman path at the start and get the kill shot stuff. So if it has both, is BM just a better execute spec than marksman? To me that doesn't really fit the spec identities. I feel like marksman should be the if if you're giving marksman kill shot especially as like a signature spell that like every marksman hunter has kill shot right whereas not every bm hunter has kill shot but if bm is the better execute spec that feels weird to me that feels like a contradictory unintuitive design um so yeah i wonder if it's worth it for bm to take both the kill shot talents and this kill command thing and just get giga execute who knows Kill Command now has two charges and deals 30% increased damage. Okay, cool. Still Trap. Uh, immobilizing them, causing them to bleed. And... Okay. It's effectively just a different... Serpent's thing. But it can miss? Eh. I don't like having a Serpent's thing that can miss. This feels like a way that players will just have usability issues with this ability, and it, it it's not that it will numerically be bad, it's that the play experience of it will be bad and unfun and frustrating. If this is effectively going to be Serpent Sting, why not just give them Serpent Sting? Or Kill Command causes a bleed or something. Why make it have a chance to miss? What what upside does it give for this to have a chance to miss? How How is that f more fun for the player? I feel like it isn't. All right. Chakrams. Uh, physical damage returned to you, damaging enemies again. Primary target takes 100% increased damage. Sure, okay. Kind of like the Death Chakram, but then they also have Death Chakram. So, rapidly deal shadow damage seven times, bouncing to other targets. They take more physical damage from you and your pet. See, this could be a raid buff thing. Like They could just take 10% more physical damage for 10 seconds. And then it could be like a small... Like, don't they love PI, right? They like, they like mutual collaboration and raid and stuff. Like, And Hunter needs class utility as justifying a raid spot. Because we don't sure have the defensive capabilities to justify it. Um... So this could be universal, maybe, and that could be a cool thing, kind of. I don't know. I'm not going to say this should work like PI, because maybe it shouldn't. Maybe that's an awful design, because PI is kind of awful. So, But whatever, I don't know. I'm just... This is a clear uh, opportunity that is maybe being missed if they're looking for a way to give Hunter utility in a similar form to that. I'm not saying they should. I'm not saying it would be good. I don't know. I haven't thought about that too much. It just kind of came to me in the moment. Each time Chakram deals damage, its damage is increased, and you generate three focus. So this is the more AOE version, but this also bounces. Or is this the single target one, because the primary target takes more damage? And this is the AOE one, because it'll bounce and spread the debuff to multiple targets? This is weird because it feels just like a mathy pick one, depending on how many targets there are in the content that you're doing. Like, they have to math balance these so carefully against each other. And even then, if I pick one over the other, do I actually feel like I made a choice? Or was I just picking the thing that did more numbers. But I'm effectively always casting Chakra, right? And it doesn't affect my gameplay at all. I mean, one generates focus, one does a Fizz Taken debuff. Maybe my rotation changes around that. Maybe. Better hope it does. Otherwise, I am I have a choice between Chakram and Chakram. It's like... They want you to find the difference between these two pictures. They're the same picture. It's not really a choice if you're giving me two of the same ability, right? I don't know. It seems weird thematically, but okay. Explosive shot. 
do fire damage. Deals reduced damage beyond five targets. Can we just, like, delete this? At least make it eight targets or something? I guess it does damage beyond five targets instead of just no damage and not bouncing at all. Alright, whatever. BM. Barb shot. Passive focus regeneration. I wonder how that'll stack with the uh, freeze trap thing. Multi shot. Reduce damage beyond 5 again, not 8. Cobra shot, which does replace steady shot. Reduces the cooldown of kill command, cool. I'm going to go through this a little bit quicker, just because I can kind of do it from reading. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to worry about the pathing stuff, because it's less important in the spectry, because there's you're, you're going to have multiple viable paths, and all this stuff is going to do damage. Whereas in the other tree, it's like BM basically has like one or two paths that they'll actually go down. So it's important to look at the pathing to find out which it, what, what, um, what stuff BM will have access to versus MM versus survival and, and what they won't also, more importantly. Okay. Increase the damage and healing of pets abilities. Again, massive healing overkill, but whatever. Makes the points in the main tree even more Omega dead than they already were, even before I saw this. Increases effectiveness of Predator's Thirst, Endurance Training, which are already damage reduction and leech, or Pathfinding passives. So making the other healing and other stuff that you're already getting even more Omega dead useless wasted talent points that they just filled in to make you spend talent points. Yuck. Okay, cool. But, I mean, it increases damage. It's cool. And it's in the class tree instead of the overall spec tree, so that there's actually, like, if BM takes this, it's because BM wants it, whereas in the main spec tree, if BM takes it, BM doesn't even want it, Survival doesn't even want it, and MM doesn't even want it, and it means MM never is able to path in that side of the tree. So you're just eliminating the actual choices of paths and creativity that MM and other specs could even have in the tree in the first place. And you're just super hard tunnel forcing MM down one path. And at that point, is it even a talent tree or is it just a talent tunnel? Right? Who knows? Okay. Barbshot has an additional charge. Good. Very good usability stuff. Increases maximum focus. Also good. I like that this is maybe skip skippable because if you're playing properly, this is maybe skippable. And then you can save two talent points. Uh, but it makes your focus. Uh, management more restrictive and require better play on your end. Uh, all pet damage is increased by 5 or 10%. I mean, it's boring, but whatever, sure. It's better than mend pet heals more. Uh, your call pet additionally summons pet from your stable. Obey kill command, cool, same as current works. Beast cleave, uh, three points. Well, no, this is fine. This is fine. Kill command damage, more boring, but flat damage increases. Cobra Shot has a chance to make your next kill command consume no focus. This is a tricky one. They'll have to balance this carefully. Because there's a chance that you get into a situation where, and this is what I mean with a spec being fundamentally broken, is that if this is like the best talent and a must take talent or something, is that for example, let's t say I normally cast between two or three Cobra shots between kill commands, right? But let's say on the first Cobra shot, I know my next kill command consumes no focus. It might actually be better for me to then do nothing instead of spending two more GCDs on Cobra shot. Maybe it's better that I do nothing, cap my focus, and then cast kill command for free because then I have banked focus. I'm full on focus at that point to then cast the two Cobra shots that I would have cast but now I'm casting them towards a new kill command to make that one also cost no focus. So it gets into a weird like snowball effect where you essentially take a spec that's almost GCD capped. It's not quite because of the focus generation currently and stuff. There is some downtime, but you introduce a spec where you're like eliminating maybe a third, a quarter, a half of the GCDs that it's currently doing. And you would make them also cap focus also while also not casting all the time and sitting on GCDs and having big downtime just to make the spec overall do, do more damage because you're able to actually spend more focus on damaging abilities of kill command and copper shots and stuff because it'll snowball itself. So this is, you need careful balance on this is what I'm saying. That might not be the case that it, that, that it would be optimal to do that. I'm not saying that is or is not the case. I'm, you would need sims and stuff to tell you that, right? But 
I'm saying this needs careful balancing so that that isn't the case because I think that play pattern would be horrendously boring and awful and I don't want that to be the case. So I'm saying pay close attention to the balance of this talent basically because this is an important talent to get the balance on right. Uh, barb shot damage is increased, boring but sure. Increases crit chance. Uh, this is effectively a passive and it just kind of punishes you more for dropping the buff but sure. Uh, we haven't notably seen Frenzy, but I'm assuming that's either a passive tied to Barb Shot or something still. Who knows? Beast Cleave is active, or it might be a later talent. We'll find out. Uh, Kill Command now strikes nearby enemies for 50% of damage dealt. So that they're splitting up the AoE, it's not just all in Beast Cleave and stuff. That's cool. Copa Shot, and I didn't skip this, but uh, also increases your haste by 5% for 8 seconds. I wonder if there's... This is like a cool thing that maybe rotation can be optimized around around this. So I'm cool with that. I like that better than some of the other more more boring Cobra Shot is increased by flat damage stuff. Murder of Crows. Cooldown resets thing. This is cool. BM should have this. I like that this is, again, introducing rotational complexity in a spec that desperately needs it if you are at the skill ceiling of the spec already. Uh, Beast of Wrath, probably a must-take talent. It's your DPS cooldown. Yep. Auto shot critical strikes. This is the RNG reactiveness proc based uh, part of the spec. Necessary to get higher 100% uh, barb shot uh, uptime on frenzy buffs and the Rilla the Hunt buff and stuff like that. So, yep. Kill shot has a chance to reset the cooldown of kill shot. So, they do want BM to be using kill shot potentially. They don't want it to be one or the other, they want you to potentially use both, and cause next kill shot to be usable on any target regardless of health. I don't like that this is 2 points, and I don't like that it's only a 3 or 6% chance. That feels too low to me. Unless you're casting kill command, like, a ton, right? Like, I cast kill command, let's say, 10 times, right? I mean, 5% means, on average, I get it 1 out of 20 casts. So 6% is like 1 out of what, like 16 casts? 18 casts? Of Kill Command? And Kill Command has like a 6 second cooldown? I mean, you cast it more during Beast of Wrath and stuff, but like... 20 casts of Kill Command just to get 1 kill shot? That's like 1 kill shot every like minute? Or 2 minutes? Or 3 minutes? Yeah? Not really a fan of that. It's like two kill shots over an entire fight duration or something on a hard boss is two kill shots worth two talent points probably not right like i don't know i feel like that needs to be higher number but who knows command your pet causing them to bleed and increase all damage taken from your pet see this is a more interesting serpents thing and it can't miss unlike the steel trap thing this is cool this is good Grants you and your pet 5 focus per second. That's a lot of focus, my dude. And 10% crit tries uh, for 10 seconds. I mean, that's a cooldown, but this spec might have a real hard time overcapping focus now. Especially if you're getting an additional 5% haste buff now. Sheesh. Okay. Wild Call has a chance to reset the cooldown to Barb Shot. Okay, cool. A different way to get the uh, proc-based nature stuff. I'm cool with that. Wailing arrows in BM, interesting. Uh, additional shadow damage, and the silence is still there. All right, cool. Stomp. I don't know why that's a two rank talent, but sure. Uh, Beast of Wrath grants charges a barb shot. See, this is cool because like this is a two rank talent, but you might there's definitely situations where you might only put one point into this depending on pathing and stuff. So that's cool. I like that. It's similar to the the post-haste and the base talent tree. I like that. Um, let's see. Barb Shot reduces the cooldown to Beast of Wrath. Yeah, I guess I'm okay with that being two ranks. Barb Shot deals increased damage, and Barb Shot has a chance to reset, but it's 100% with two points. Chance to reset the cooldown of Kill Command. Hmm. I could also see you maybe 
leaving that as a one pointer. This is interesting. I like that. Hookman has a chance to summon a dire beast. Three points though. Could this just be 1530? Again, here's the problem. They put all the cool stuff at the bottom, and I get that you want to make us have choices of what stuff do I have points to spend on, what points do I not have points to spend on, and I want to get both of these, but I only have points for one and not both, right? Like, and it makes you make that hard choice. But I want that choice to be the choice between those two things, and not the choice of this thing just costs more talent points because they needed it to cost more talent points. Does that make sense? Like. I don't want the design balancing stuff to be so transparent and that the choice is artificial feeling, if that makes sense. that it, or, or it's transparent in the artificial, like, forced nature of it kind of thing. You would ideally, I think in designing these trees, want the hard choices to not feel artificially forced, but to feel fairly natural and... Yeah not artificially padded and transparently just like they had to do that but maybe that's an impossible idealistic naive hope that probably can never happen which is probably true that's I, to be fair that is asking a lot of a design so that's maybe asking too much i'm okay with it uh calls two of your active pets a random pet for your stable will appear I mean, sure. Just depends on the numbers tuning of this, kind of. I mean, it's fine. Dire Beast increases the damage of Steady and Multishot. But because... I assume Cobra Shot also gets buffed by this because it replaces Steady Shot. I hope so. Um, this is a cool also rotational complexity thing that maybe there's optimizing you can do around this, so sure. Uh, Killer Cobra, while... Yep. Same as it works currently, this is cool. Same as it works currently, kind of boring but cool. Sure, those are decent choice nodes. While Call of the Wild is active, Barbershot has a 25% chance to gain charge any time focus is spent. Weird. Is there a way to spend focus outside of a GCD? Because this only lasts 20 seconds, right? So let's say you get 15 GCDs during that time. Or 16 to make the math easy. So you get four extra barb shots, effectively. But that's if you're spending 16 casts which spend focus but you're now replacing four of those casts with barb shots, which don't spend focus. So there's like a weird anti-synergy where the more you spend focus, the less you can spend focus because you're getting barb shots. This talent is weird. This feels like a talent that has anti-synergy with itself. And I don't understand the intended use case for this. This looks weak to me on first inspection, but it's hard for me to know for sure. Unless I'm missing something important with that, but I don't understand. Okay. Well, Call of the Wild is active. Barb Shot affects all your summoned pets. See, now this looks like a strong buff. Whereas this looks like I get a couple extra Barb Shots. Woo. Whereas this is like, my pets are chunking people, dude. Let's go. Fight that dude. Alright. Overall, BM talent tree, pretty good. It covered a lot of what I was hoping for. The baseline tree for BM, though, is god-awful. Actually atrociously bad. And needs reworking. Literally, brainstorm with hunter players for ideas of BM talents that can be utility and stuff that isn't just six different ways of making my pet heal itself. Because... God, is that the most boring thing I could possibly think to spend talent points on. I would literally rather take Scare Beast and use it on one fight in the whole expansion than spend, like, 
eight talent points on making my pet heal itself better. Jesus. Okay. Aim shot. Cool. Arcane shot. Uh, focus cost reduced. Cool. Steady shot generates 10 focus. Cool. It's weird that it doesn't do that automatically, but I guess it has to cost focus for the other specs, maybe? I don't know. Anyway. Shy shots causes them to do more damage. Two shot. Or uh, two rank talent. Cool. Rapid fire. Still usable while moving. Still a channel. Uh, okay. One thing. If rapid fire is going to work this way, you need to make it so that trying to use a different ability, for example, arcane shot or kill shot, um, especially instance, don't interrupt the channel early and mean that you lose out on getting the seven shots because it cancels the channel early after like 1.5 seconds instead of the full two seconds. So right now you need macros on all your abilities with no channeling uh, conditionals. Uh, that should just be baseline built into the abilities and so that you don't need to macro all your abilities. But if you can do that and make Rapid Fire not need macros on all your abilities, then cool. But otherwise, make it so that people don't need macros or need to know that they need macros because otherwise it's just a noob trap like punishing noobs for not knowing the thing that they think their spec should just work with itself and it doesn't because yeah weird clunkiness kill shot critical strike strike chance increased cool aim shot damage increased boring but cool aim shot deals bonus damage to targets who are above 70 percent health this is really cool i love this uh optimizing this on certain fights definitely cool uh multi shot boring but cool aim shot critical strike chance note this doesn't say gives trick shots interesting Oh, this is damage increased. I was like, did they make the same talent twice? But no, it's kill shot, critical strike, and this is aim shot, 5 and 10. All right, sure. Rapid fire. Oh, it's the same as normal streamline. This is kind of cool. Here's the thing. Here's the problem with rapid fire and, and streamline as a talent, is that causing your next aim shot to cast faster seems like a rotational complexity thing that you can optimize, but it actually isn't because it's just a passive, and it rarely ever actually matters. It kind of mattered in some fights specifically for volley, but the problem was true shot also reduced the cast time of aim shot so that it didn't actually matter most of the time. And you also got haste, which also reduces the cast time of stuff from steady focus. So, yeah, it's kind of boring. If this is actually rotational complexity, it's a little bit better, but right now it isn't and probably won't, will stay not being that anyway. When they damage target below 20% health, you gain 1% increased crit for 6 seconds, stacking up to- They literally remade Bullseye from Legion. Yes, this is- Okay, this is one of the best artifact traits from Legion. This is sick. I loved that artifact trait. That was super fun. Okay, yes, love this. Absolutely love this. Blizzard, you've won me over. I don't care that the base tree is awful. You won me over. I'm, I'm picking- hard picking this in every fight. Unless it's Sylvanas again, where she dies at 45%. But I, Bullseye is so fun. Okay, yes. Love that. Arcane shot and multi shot damage increased by 25%. I mean, sure. It's it's a one-point talent? It's almost weird. Like, this, this could be a two-pointer. Like, 12 and 25 or something. Interesting. All right, sure. Uh, bursting shot. Knocking them back. Here's the, here's the weird thing with bursting shot is in a world where you can take the high explosive trap thing in the base talent tree, is that Bursting Shot kind of no longer has a use ever. Because when are you going to be basically in melee range to Bursting Shot something versus just throwing the trap from like 50 yards away, right? This feels like a never pick talent. I don't know, maybe in PvP or something, but. You could probably put this in the base talent tree and remove it from the MM tree. Because I'm definitely way more excited. Don't, don't do the opposite. Don't put, uh, don't remove MM having access to the trap and don't put this in the general talent tree and put the trap in here. Literally, every single person, every single hunter is more excited to press and use the trap than they are with Bursting Shot, okay? 
the additional range not having to be in melee is so much nicer. First shot can be for like survival or something if you want to do that. That is fine. But they're already in melee, so they don't care. Each shot of rapid fire now generates one focus. This should probably be baseline, but whatever. It's fine. It's a talent. It, it eats a point. They need you to path through stuff. Whatever. I'm okay with this. It's not inspired, but it's better than healing my pet. Arcane shot and multi shot have a 30. Percent chance to reduce the cooldown of rapid fire by five seconds. All right, I'm okay with that. That's cool. Surging shots deals additional damage, and aim shot has a 50 percent. All right, we like these. These are cool choices. Pog. Truck shots. <sighs> let me two target cleave, as MM, and let me hit more than five targets. I want to misdirect more than five mobs in mythic plus to my tank when my tank pulls six plus mobs in mythic plus and i have to rng pray that i misdirect the mobs that need misdirecting onto him and then i don't misdirect those mobs because trick shots randomly hits the other targets i literally want to scream make this do reduced damage for additional targets past five or six or eight or whatever the number is just make me be able to redirect the threat on all of them i beg you i beg you so bad okay aim shot has a 10 percent chance to grant a charge of kill shot and cause your next kill shot to be usable on any target nice cool we like that uh this is effectively kind of flayed shot venthyr mm baked in to aim shot now which is cool when you fall below 40 percent health bursting shots cooldown is immediately reset First of all, I don't think this needs a 30 second cooldown. This could have like a 10 to 15 to 20 second cooldown. Second, nobody's excited to pick this. No MM Hunter standing 50 yards away from the boss is ever going to have cast Bursting Shot in the first place and have it be on cooldown and then want to intentionally drop to low health to reset the cooldown to be able to cast it again. That situation has never occurred in the history of World of Warcraft, okay? If this was explosive shot, this would be cool. So just change this to explosive shot. That's all I ask. Or, worst case scenario, if you don't want us to have another DPS option and explosive shot is too strong, Make this high explosives traps cooldown is immediately reset. I will accept that as a consolation prize, but bursting shot should be deleted from the game when high explosive trap exists. Okay, volley's back. Let's go. Um, gain the effects of trick shots. Okay, here's the thing: is volley still going to be on GCD most likely? Which means is this six seconds of trick shots? No. It's four and a half seconds of trick shots, which feels wonky. It's okay. It's just, if you're going to give me such a short buff, I want to be able to use all of the short buff, not only three quarters of the short buff. But whatever, I'm used to it by this point. Volley is still fun. <laughs> and good for AoE and stuff, and burst especially. When trick shots affects fades or is consumed, your next multi-shot will deal 200% additional damage. Nice. Okay cool sure using steady shot twice in a row increases your haste all right cool sure lone wolf increases your it's all the way down here so mm can choose to have a pet for a lot now interesting okay i my personal opinion is that i like not being required to have a pet so i hope that this is the best dps talent is for builds to take this. Dealing with pets in raid just sucks. It just does. I want to play my class. I don't want to play having to worry about is my pet it gonna bug out and be able to hit the boss. It just You just remove DPS from my control and just make it random bugginess as the dictator of whether I will do damage or not. Right? You wouldn't release a class or a spec that was just buggy 
and had a chance to do its full damage because of bugs, that would be unacceptable, although that has existed for quite a long time. Uh, bugs obviously do happen and do exist and do hamper and hinder classes severely sometimes. But choosing actively, choosing consciously to do it, I feel like is not the play. I don't think any MM player really misses the pet by this point. I think they're okay without it. And if they want to play with a pet, they can play BM. I don't know. That feels too harsh. Maybe MM should have the option of playing with a pet. But it should cost DPS because of the bugginess and having to deal with a pet, I feel like. It shouldn't be more DPS to just give yourself a headache, right? That, that would be a bad design talent. If this talent said, give yourself a migraine and do 1% more DPS, would that be a talent that the Blizzard developers put in the game? You say, take an Advil, do 1% more damage in prog? I feel like that would be a bad talent. People would hate that talent, right? But they did put that talent in the game. It's called PI, and it's still in the priest talent tree. Got him! All right. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I'm having fun with this. I'm an hour into it. Let's keep going. Kill shot causes aim charge to recharge. That's a big percent faster, but only for three seconds. And that's three ranks of a talent. Man, this is a weird talent. I feel like this could be two ranks. I feel like this could be a longer duration. I feel like this could be a lower percentage for this being a longer duration. Man, this is a weird talent, but sure. I don't know what to think of this. I'm just kind of moving on. It exists. That's my analysis so far. Crit damage is increased. Pog, big number fun. Monkey brain happy. True shot. It's your DPS cooldown. Um, this still has the same problem of current true shot, which is while you have the true shot buff active, you completely ignore precise shots in favor of just casting aim shot. And it's usually a trap to cast your precise shot stacks. And that shouldn't be how the spec works, fundamentally. You should want to cast the precise shot stacks. But this causes aim shot to cap charges too fast, and aim shot does too much damage. Hope they fix that somehow. Aim shot has a 100% chance to also fire a serpent sting. Yeah, it's fine. Especially, this might be a one point talent for the 50% only, and you can still have 100% uptime on it. Or it might just be the best, even if you have some downtime. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. I like the management of multi-dotting sometimes, and I like the management of dot refreshing sometimes. But making it a passive is nice too. I'm okay with this. Killshot has two charges, cool. It's weird to have a talent that's like probably useless for 80% of a boss fight, unless you have other talents. And maybe this should just be baked into the other talents, if it's going to be useful or useless without those talents. I don't know. It's fine. It's not the end of the world. It's just weird to have it so low on the talent tree, I feel like. Like, row 8 is kind of far down, but whatever. Oh! Heavy ammo. Trick shots now ricochets to two fewer targets. So does this mean... My reading of this is that it ricochets now to a maximum of three targets. Is that correct? So I, I hard cap myself at three targets but each ricochet deals additional 25% damage. So they are giving us the best three target AoE in the game. As a niche. This is a cool talent, cool. Trick shots now causes aim shot and rapid fire to ricochet to two additional targets. So this is their solution to uncapping. But here's the problem. I'm still one of very few specs in the game that has a threat funnel redirect. And whether it's five targets or seven targets, the problem is that the threat funnel redirect not hitting all of the targets that I want to threat redirect onto the tank, the problem still presents itself when you hit N plus one targets, whether the number is five, whether the number is six, or whether the number is seven, or whether the number is three. The problem still introduces itself at N plus one, whatever N is. N should instead just always hit all of the targets. It can do reduced damage past a certain point to a certain number of targets. This says trick shots now causes reduced damage instead of at 5 targets at up to 7 targets. 
before reduction applies or so, like there's a better way to word it but like please let me threat redirect all of the mobs onto the tank when i use misdirect please i beg casting arcane shot or multi shot reduces the cooldown of true shot by one to three seconds yeah it's cool the problem is the more you are in true shot the less you're casting these abilities also by the nature of true shot meaning that you ignore casting these except on AoE where you still have to cast multi-shot, which then means you're overcapping on aim shot charges and you don't have enough focus to spend multi-shot and aim shot. So then you need to generate more focus, but you can't generate more focus. The the weird anti-synergy, anti-feedback loop thing presents itself here, but it's not as bad because true shot is a longer cooldown. So it's a less severe problem, but it's okay. Ranged auto chance auto attacks have an 8% chance to trigger lock and load. This has felt for the entirety of Shadowlands like too low of a percentage chance to trigger. I think this should be 10% minimum, possibly up to like 12 to 15%. It feels like you can go for too long stretches of time and not get any lock and load procs when you're desperately wanting just one lock and load proc and your rotation would be so much smoother and so much more fluid and it would like solve your problems for like the next like a minute of the fight and then you just never get any procs and it feels awful so i think just up the chance on this a little bit would be cool Imshot has a chance to coalesce extra wind arrows that also shoot your target i uh, can do these work with AoE, with trick shots, that's the question, because it worked with marked shot. This was big AoE in the past. Big AoE burst. And also, what is the chance? This has an 8% chance. This has a question mark chance. Give me number, please. Double tap. Next aim shot will fire a second time instantly at 100% power without consuming focus, or your next rapid fire works the same as normal. Cool. Two shot lasts an additional uh, three seconds, reduces the focus cost of all your abilities by 25%. This was a legendary power for all of Shadowlands, and it was useless. Or we gain crit while in true shot. Now, with, with this overlapping with Bullseye and us having 5% additional or 10% additional crit on aim shot and kill shot, I believe, is that. If you're getting flat crit, and you're getting 30% crit from Bullseye, and you're getting 10% crit on top of that, so you basically have 40% crit guaranteed on aim shot and kill shot, plus whatever flat percentage this gives you at 13 stacks, at 130 rating for the duration of true shot. So for some duration of true shot, let's say it's 5%, right? You essentially already have 45% baked in crit on aim shot and kill shot in execute uh, specifically. So then you have a you have introduced a crit cap of around 55% because any crit past that is useless in execute. Now it's not a hard cap obviously, it's a very soft cap that only applies in execute really and only long duration execute where you can stack up bullseye to the full uh, amount and things like that. And you'll have a true shot during that execute, but just be aware that that might introduce a crit cap scenario in gearing if that is the case. And if it's more than 5% that amount just becomes lower. Instead of 55%, maybe it's 52%, right? And that's potentially very strong, especially also when you get critical strike damage increased. And there might also be triggers that happen on crits. As far as I know, stuff doesn't trigger off crits, but if it did, that is a potential problem. Wailing Arrow is also in here. Um, a lot of the power of Wailing Arrow was in how it was buffed by Resonating Arrow and Kyrian, um, what is it, Enfeebled Mark Conduit, stuff like that. So if that doesn't exist in Dragonflight, which it currently doesn't, um, the base up, like damage of this ability would need to be buffed to some extent to make it worth using significantly over stuff like a massively buffed kill shot or aim shot i believe so balance on this needs to be carefully adjusted i would say 
Windrunner's Guidance, bonus wind arrows from Imshot have a chance, oh, even more crit chance. Okay, so what I was saying about 55%, now that's down to 40%, possibly, on the wind arrows or something. And they deal increased crit damage. Dang, that's a strong talent. Three points, that's, see, this is a strong three-point talent. I'm cool with this. Okay, I'm not going to talk about uh, survival too much, just because I think there's more educated and experienced survival people that could talk about this. I'm just going to briefly glance over it and things like that. I do see uh, wildfire, eh, wildfire infusion here. I see improved wildfire bomb. I see carve still in here. Um, here's wildfire bomb. But it doesn't look like they exactly have the current tier set sticking around from what I can see. Uh, Frenzy Strikes, Carve Reduces, so it might still be a heavily, there might still be a heavily bomb playstyle, but I was curious to see if they would stick with the bomb focus of survival going into Dragonflight, and it looks like there might be some way of still getting some of it. But this is already a very long video, I already went in probably a lot of detail, I did not mean or intend to talk for an hour and a half, I thought this would be like half hour video tops, but... I had a lot to say as I was going through, mostly in the original talent tree. I actually didn't spend very long, I think, in BM and MM, but the baseline talent tree I had a lot to say because I had a lot of feelings generally already from Shadowlands that I had to uh, get out there. Anyway, hopefully that's a lot of feedback that devs can take. Hopefully I wasn't too harsh. I tried to be a little bit comedic with it, but you know, sometimes that stuff lands and sometimes it doesn't. So uh, hopefully you take the feedback that I'm giving you as uh, feedback and not, you know, a personal attack or anything. I just want the game and the spec and stuff to be as fun and as best as it can be. That's all I'm that's all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to be helpful. Uh, if I come off the wrong way, definitely apologize, but I'm excited for, for Dragonflight. Cool. That's all I got.